You know, we're surrounded by these incredibly complex systems, everything from our own bodies to the power grids that light up our cities. But have you ever stopped to wonder, what's the secret sauce? What's the hidden rule that decides why some things can handle unbelievable stress, while others just completely fall apart? Well, today, we're pulling back the curtain on that hidden layer. It's called functional resilience. Okay, so let's start with this little guy, the tardigrade. This microscopic creature is an absolute beast. It can handle conditions that would instantly kill almost anything else. We're talking boiling heat, pressure that would crush a submarine, radiation doses that are thousands of times higher than what's lethal for us, and yeah, even the total vacuum of outer space. It's practically indestructible. And then you have our stuff, the things we build. Our most advanced, most expensive, and most critical infrastructures, like a modern power grid, can be completely taken down by a hurricane or sometimes even just a really bad storm. So that sets up a heck of a puzzle, right? What is the real difference here? What actually makes something resilient? Well, for decades, it turns out that science and engineering have basically been chasing the wrong clue. We've been absolutely obsessed with a system's structure. You know, its blueprint, its wiring diagram, the physical map of what's connected to what. But as we're about to see, that's a massive, massive mistake. I mean, just look at what happened in New Orleans after Hurricane Ida back in 2021. Once the storm passed, the physical power grid, the skeleton of towers and wires, was actually mostly still standing. Structurally, you'd look at it and think, okay, that's not so bad. But functionally, it was completely dead. The flow of electricity, the information, the coordination needed to run it, all gone. And that right there is the key difference we're talking about. See, structural integrity just means the pieces are still physically connected. But functional integrity, the thing that actually matters, means the pieces can still work together to do their job. A system can look perfectly fine on the outside, but be functionally useless. Okay, let me break it down with an analogy that'll make this super clear. Think about a city's road network. The map itself, with all the streets and intersections, that's the structure. A route you plan on Google Maps, that's just a potential path. But the traffic, the real-time, dynamic, messy flow of all the cars trying to get around traffic jams and accidents, that is the function. The map doesn't tell you if you're actually going to get to work on time, does it? All right, so if looking at the blueprint is the wrong way to go, where do we find the right clues? Well, believe it or not, we turn to nature because some of the simplest organisms on the planet are absolute masters of functional design. This is just wild. You've got slime molds. These are single-celled organisms with no brain, no central command, and they can work together to solve a maze and find the most efficient path to food. Or look at fire ants. When a flood comes, they link their bodies together to build a living, breathing, unsinkable raft to save the colony. Their incredible functionality doesn't come from some top-down blueprint. It just emerges from simple local rules. So all these clues from nature are pointing us in a new direction. And it led researchers like Dr. Manlio de Domenico to a pretty revolutionary new framework. It's a whole new way of seeing, and for the first time ever, actually measuring a system's function. And it draws its inspiration from the super strange world of quantum physics. To really get what this new way of seeing things is all about, Let's go way back to Plato's cave. You know the story. Plato warned we might spend our whole lives just watching shadows flicker on a cave wall, thinking that's reality. Well, for decades, that's exactly what network science has been doing, staring at the shadow, the static structure, instead of the reality of what the system is actually doing. So how do we get out of the cave? How do we see beyond those shadows? Well, on the left here, you have that single static map. The key is to stop looking at just that. Instead, like you see on the right, we have to look at the entire collection, the statistical ensemble of all the possible paths, all the possible states a system could find itself in when things get tough. It's not about what the network is, it's about everything it could be. Okay, so the tool they use for this is called the density matrix. And I know, that sounds super technical, but don't get hung up on the name or the math. Just think of it like a powerful new kind of camera. It doesn't just take one snapshot. Instead, it captures a summary of all the possible ways a signal or a failure could ripple through the network over time. It's a way to measure functional flexibility. Now, this is the really cool part. This isn't just some abstract theory for a whiteboard. It has real practical uses right now. It lets us finally build smarter systems and design them better because we can finally see where their true weaknesses are hiding. 
So for years, the old way to stress test a network was what you'd call a structural attack. You just take out the biggest, most connected hubs and see what happens. But this new approach is so much smarter. It's about launching functional attacks, targeting the nodes that are most critical to the actual flow of information. They even have a new metric for it called entanglement centrality. It's like finding the absolute keystone in an arch made of information. And listen to this. The results are just stunning. When they tested this on real-world networks, from the tiny nervous system of a worm to the human brain and even the entire Chilean power grid, this functional approach consistently found the critical weak spots, the ones that were completely invisible to the old way of looking at things. It's like having x-ray vision for failure. And it gets even better. This new framework, it also solves another huge mystery in network science. Why are most successful networks in nature and tech so sparse? Why so few connections? Well, it turns out sparsity is the perfect sweet spot. If you have too many links, signals travel fast, but your responses become rigid and predictable. Too few links and you have lots of flexibility, but everything slows to a crawl. Sparsity is the optimal balance between the two. Okay, so let's pull all these threads together. What's the big picture here? What does shifting our whole perspective to function really mean? Well, it turns out it provides the deep, scientific how for a really popular and powerful idea you might have already heard of. And that idea is anti-fragility. It was coined by Nassim Nicholas Taleb, and it's the idea that some systems don't just survive shocks, they actually get stronger from them. For years, it's been a powerful philosophical guide, but now this work by Domenico provides the hard physics and information theory that explains how anti-fragility actually works under the hood. And what's just so incredible is how perfectly these two worlds line up. You can see it right here. Di Domenico's emergent functionality, that's Taleb's positive regulation, where a system gets better under stress. The local randomness and the physics model, that maps directly to what Taleb calls philostochasticity, a love of randomness. It's this beautiful convergence of ideas from two totally different fields. So really, it all boils down to this one simple takeaway. For so long, functionality has been the one missing dimension in how we look at networks. We were basically trying to understand a 3D world while only looking at a 2D map. And that, of course, leaves us with a huge, exciting question for the future. Now that we finally have the right tools, now that we can see and measure the true functional resilience of a system, what's next? What kind of truly robust, adaptive, maybe even unbreakable systems could we finally start to build? The possibilities are just getting started.